uh, this bad student. And when it happened, the impetus for this was I got this mannequin at a flea market. And then I was making this shot in Eastern Europe. And uh, I wanted, I, my idea was to keep this incredible mannequin, uh, 19th century, mid 19th century, I think it was. And uh, but in the other room, um, I had this ready with me for, for working, and I saw the severed head of this old lady. And I got the idea, I went back that night, made some sketches I normally do, and figured out that if I got a wig for the lady, uh, she would look more like a kind of a little girl and like a student, and like that's how it came about in the drawing. And so it took a couple of days to get the, the wig, and I was working with this uh, makeup uh, person who does my uh, hair too. And uh, I put this up, the blackboard was there. The structure of the blackboard was, uh, I think, uh, notes of a doctor about the uh, joints of the knees, I think. But the great thing is that I took the mannequin off the stand and just placed it against the shoulder, the left shoulder against the blackboard, and it stood there without the head, and then I put the head on with the uh, uh, wig, and it was perfect, it was just perfect. Uh, and I, it was just a question of using, utilizing the early morning light, a very, very raking light, we'll say. <laughs> raking light. And then uh, using a fill. And um, actually, this was early on in this whole group of work, so that uh, originally I had made the print with uh, printing through glass. That's how these shapes are made. A lot of this stuff is made. But uh, I figured out later that if I would make. Um, these shapes were made in a very, very simple way with a uh, triple zero brush and some pigment for spotting prints. But if you put it down and let it dry a certain way, it'll make these really beautiful, beautiful spots. And that didn't happen before. So I negated uh, the other print I'd make. I made before this, and, and this is the, the replacement. I've never done this before, but it, it's an ongoing process of discovery. And in, in this uh, sense, too, I made these spots. The spots on this glass took me two days. And uh, uh, it, one thing, as far as Kathy's writing, which I love, she said, it's not that I make the photograph so much as like I print it, as, as basically build it. And basically, this is a real reference to building the photograph. Because I think I've gone through about maybe three or four hours of different shapes here until I liked this one. Uh, and it all has to be perfect, perfect, perfect. In fact, I have, in my work, negated a print if I don't have enough tone right over there. That, to me, is, is the, the big difference. It has to be perfect. And uh, so bad student is not only about, uh, say, the lack of passion in Western society as far as education, uh, but it's about how information is is gotten and then, of course, given before that. And uh, normally it's not given right. It's not given clearly. And uh, I love this. I love this photograph. I love it. I love it. I don't, uh, I don't release anything unless it's perfect. And I love this photograph. Love it. This photograph is a kind of like a, a, an icon for me about um, uh, if there was a portrait of homosexuality, this would be my portrait of homosexuality. Okay? And um, these men are straight, and I think that matters uh, in this case, but this guy is a composer of classical music, and he's the lover of the woman in Paris who does makeup and hair for me. And I worked with him for years, but I never met him, but I did meet him socially. And he was perfect to how to basically uh, build a photograph around him. Because you don't see this kind of person. This person could be like, uh, like Beauty and the Beast. He could have been Beast, you know, and uh, without the makeup. And he's wearing his own hair. Uh, his best friend is an acrobat. And this guy really had a, a terrific body and a terrific ass. That's very important because I, I mentioned that I, years before I bought this very, very uh, slinky tight dress. And I said, it would be great if I can photograph a prostitute or something like that and have a hole made in the bag. And um, but as it turned out, I, I went back to Paris with the dress and 
in Albuquerque had another one made. We couldn't actually uh, make the exact fabric, but it was close enough. And there's a third person in here. There's a woman's hand who was the translator for me in this shot. And uh, you know, I went out and I could have bought a cheap lipstick, but no, I had to buy the most expensive lipsticks. <laughs> and so uh, he's wearing the lipstick because she applied it. And um, uh, for me, it's this kind of uh, interior kind of reflection. And most people, when they see this, uh, their first impression is, well, is that the same guy reflected, you know? And it basically, it, it argues the, uh, I guess, a discipline to look at the work to see what's there. And actually, it is, it is a reflection, uh, for sure, of, of two consciousnesses, uh, uh, two people posing, perhaps as gay men, posing as un-gay men, I don't know. But it's this, this uh, connection between uh, what we are and what we become as far as a dialogue with other people.